Hi, welcome to SBR TV. I'm Peter Loshak. This is the T. Powell College Basketball Show on SBR for January 25th, where the SBR poster T. Powell gives us insights into betting college basketball in general and forecasts a few lines of specific games for us. Okay, T. Powell, you, you ready to go again? Yeah, ready to go again. Just uh, wishing we could do, do this show a little later in the week, but um, yeah. that's Cause you a little, got college. little problem right now. Right, because your cause, cause your college schedule gets in the way. But that's all right. When it, whenever you're available, uh, I'm happy to have you because, you, I mean, your advice has gone great so far. You know, I mean, everyone was expecting you to be giving good advice, and uh, it's definitely been the case. Yeah, I feel like uh, there's been some pretty good advice given, you know, a couple – Couple things that you know didn't go away. So, uh, so let's first get look at the uh, at the comments from the other guys. They've they've seemed to have laid off. There weren't as many negative comments uh, as as there were in the first two weeks, which is which is good. Um, and I noticed the first one didn't have anything to do with your accent or your presentation. It was from Profane Reality. He uh, he was he wasn't happy. He said he used the term uh, the number programs play to. He's completely ripping off Alan Boston right now. That's a phrase Alan Boston has used for years. And then you came back and you said, every guy, everyone knows programs play to certain numbers. Of course, Alan Boston has used the phrase for years. If not, he wouldn't be a great capper. So for those of us who don't know, for those of the, the viewers who don't know, what does that mean, playing to a, cert, playing to a number? Playing to a number. Um, the best way to describe that is look at what a d- what does a Duke play? What, how does Duke play every year? But for the most part, you know, you take out a few of the years. The year Villanova, be, you know, beat them pretty handily. And but you know, for the most part, they're you know a top ten team. Mm-hmm. And you look at a team, maybe you know a pin, you know Pennsylvania, and they're not going to play to as high a number, you know, generally. And you know, it just across the board, you know, and the, uh, most of it starts with recruiting. You know, uh, Duke's going to get the athletes, you know, top your athletes and Penn's going to get, you know, leftovers for the most part, and that's generally how it goes, you know. Occasionally, you know, the recruiting could get a little scrambled, and you could pick up an under-the-radar player, you know, a two-star that, you know, turns out to be a lot better than that, and you'll have, you know, your ups and your upswings there with the lower teams, but, you know, in general, you know, recruiting dictates um, right. how programs play, and so when you're so when you're using it uh, involved with handicapping, how how is that how is that phrase and that concept used? How do you use it? How does Alan, Alan Boston use it? What what's it used for? I, I really can't speak for Mr. Boston, but uh, for myself, uh, it's more of a um, it's more at the start of the year. You know, you you uh, you make sure you don't get too under or over what uh, the program usually plays to. Uh, a good example this year was Florida. They brought back five starters from a decent team last year as NCAA tournament team. Mm-hmm. But, but um, outside of the, the few years they had where they, you know, they won the national championship with Noah, I mean, they haven't really been, you know, an upper tier team. And I believe I had them starting out at an 80, 85 and a half, around an 86. And, you know, I only bumped them up, you know, a couple of, Points, even though we're even though you know returning five starters, I would expect to probably bump them up more than that. You know, probably around four or five points. All right. Well, I don't I don't see anything wrong with 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 copying successful methods of uh, of successful handicappers like Alan Boston and using their terms. Yeah, I didn't really see the big deal yeah. about that. You know, these uh, Alan Boston's numbers aren't exactly right. public. You know, um, I made my own here right. and. I mean, I might you know, get worried if you were like copying Brock Landers and you were like, "This is going to be a rubber band play for me." Ah, I, I really like this play a lot. It's a, it's a rubber band or something like that, you know. But copying Alan Boston, that, that, that's great. That's who you should be copying. All right, then uh, there's a bunch of people who like you. College over under and bookie, they both want you to talk more about mid majors and even minor conferences like the OVC. So, do you deal with those at all? I mean, all the games that we've been talking about in the teams are all major conferences. Do you ignore the mid majors? Uh. Do not. I have numbers for them, just like the others. But a lot of the times, the numbers are a little less, less, less accurate than normal, just because it's it's really difficult to find right. all the time to do all the conferences. And I really, I really need more time to probably do the do all these teams. I've got probably over 200 in my database right now, so you know it's just impossible to keep up with all the teams. But right. And then uh, here we go. Patrick Bateman, the troublemaker Patrick Bateman, he posted a link to uh, Deliverance, the uh, link to uh, the Wikipedia entry on Deliverance. So, uh, you know, all right, we get it. Do Deliverance jokes bother you at all? Or do you identify with that movie at all? Or do you have any relatives who, you know, remind you of that movie or anything? 
To be honest, I've never heard of that movie, and I, I, I did look at the Wikipedia, and I, I, I got a pretty good laugh out of that, to be honest, but uh, no, I have never saw that movie, to be honest. <laughs> okay. Well, watch it if you have a little bit of spare time. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the teams that you were talking about. Mississippi State, uh, they faltered against Georgia. They were a 10.5-point underdog. Do you think that they're going to be a, a, a good bet going forward still? I, I, can, I just can't see why they wouldn't be. They have so much talent, and, you know, 4-11 and 11 against the spread, the numbers, you know, dictate that they're gonna they're gonna eventually come back to you know that there's just not a lot of you know big name programs in the you know the bcs conferences that have seasons like that you know i mean they it's got to come back to a little closer than 500 at least and i think it's gonna come back a lot closer than what most people expect because right. of their talent level and then utah state you still like in utah state in general as a good bet as a small favorite Oh, uh, yeah, I, I do. I like them anywhere, you know, as a single-digit favorite or even right. an underdog, which I don't – I haven't looked at their schedule, right. but I, I wouldn't expect them to be an underdog probably the rest of the year. And there's anything else you want to talk about that's caught your eye before we get to the uh, specific games? Uh, a team that uh, I do think could uh, produce some pretty good results in the very near future is they're 11-7 they're and seven against the spread. It's the Temple Owls. They haven't covered their last three games. This team, you know, I believe has, I mean, they'll put it together eventually. And like they did starting out, you know, at Villanova, they lost to four, lost by four. Um, they won at Maryland. They beat Georgetown, three-point game against Texas A&M on a neutral site. Beat Georgia on a neutral site. They definitely have my attention for this so week. Mississippi State, Utah State still as a small favorite, and uh, Temple is what you're like.